Please bear with me. Is Allah the same as the God of Abraham, Moses, and Jesus? Simple question. It is the same. It's the same Lord. <clears throat> same creator. Okay. Same architect of the universe. Next question. Same God. Imam, which was the... F I'm not trying to be clever with you, honestly. This is only a, a system of questioning. Sure. Which... According to your knowledge, which verse was the first revealed to Muhammad? Uh, Ikra, the 96th chapter of the Quran. It says, yeah, it's, it's Al-Alaq, chapter 96, one, you're right. That's correct. I Ikra, yeah. bismi rabbika alladhi khalaqa khalaqa al-insana min alaq. That's correct. Correct. Now, my question to you is this. In the Bible, According to the Bible, in Genesis, the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath, the breath of life. And yes. man became a living being. Now, right. al-alaq in Arabic language has got two meanings. One is a leech, and the other one is a blood clot. These right. two contradict the Bible. So how is that possible? Well, I, all, I was always amazed by this contradiction, really. Well, let's look at, first of all, I mean, the term uh, clot isn't, I mean, it can be used in English, but really it's a clinging substance. It's a clinging okay. substance, really, yeah. uh, that connects really to the wall of the uterus of the female. And then after... 280 days, nine month period of gestation that comes into existence. The Bible is talking from the standpoint of the inspiration that's given to man. Man is not a living soul until he is inspired by God. So until what's referred to in many circles as the astral body is actually alive uh, in the individual or in the baby or in the child or the growing entity, It's not a living soul until inspiration comes into it. So just because it can breathe, because it has oxygen, and because it's getting factors from the ether uh, of the world, doesn't make it a living soul. I mean, it has animation. The body has animation. The physical aspect has animation. But it's not classified as a living soul until inspiration comes into it. So it's basically, the, you, you're really talking basically the same thing, actually, When you, when you say read, when you say read, you're talking, you, you're talking about being inspired. And it's the same thing when inspiration is coming into man. So they're really saying the same thing, uh, but quite naturally you have to have some type of understanding of Scripture uh, in order for you to really be able to make the connection. Okay. Sounds very logical. The next question is Al-Ma'idah, chapter 5, verse 46. I'm going, to quote, I'm going to quote it in English. And we sent, sure. following in their footsteps, Jesus, the son of Mary, confirming that which came before him in the Torah. This is remarkable because the Quran uses the word Torah exactly as the Jews use it in their own language. And we gave yeah. him the gospel in which was guidance and light, and confirming that which preceded it from the Torah as guidance and instruction for the righteous. So, in the Arabic language of the Quran, Allah says that he revealed the Torah to Moses, and he revealed the Gospels to Jesus. Right or wrong? Right. Correct. Okay. This is only one, it's only one agency of prophethood. That's the yeah. first thing that we should accept. We're not only one agency. Yeah. We're not, well, I'm not disputing anything like that. All, all I'm doing right. is I'm quoting exactly what the Quran says. But my question now is this. Anyone who knows the Gospels knows that they were written after Jesus was dead and resurrected. Nobody gave the Gospels to Jesus. So the information that the, Jesus received the Gospels from Allah is wrong. It's another question I want to ask you. You say in terms of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? 
Don't yes, yes. Uh, these these go, yeah, in these many gospels. Cases we don't even know. Now, in many cases, we don't even know who wrote them. I accept that, but the fact is, they were not revealed to jo to Moses, uh, to Jesus. They were written after Jesus was get, dead and resurrected. So, That's correct. Yeah, but so to say it was revealed by Allah is wrong. That what was revealed by what came to Jesus, the Christ? Yes. What came to Jesus, what came to Jesus came from Allah. We believe that that came from Allah. We believe that we know that man has pretty much um, put his footprint on Old Testament and New Testament. So we, we accept the fact that, you know, man has had his hand uh, into the scripture and into the revelation uh, that was given to Christ Jesus, given to Moses. The only book that really hasn't been tampered with is the Quran, the, the Arabic and the Quran. But you keep so, saying, yeah, I, I hear this a lot of times, where did anybody find out that the Gospels and the Torah were tampered with. Where? Nowhere in the whole of the Quran, nowhere in the whole of the Hadith that I studied, is there any indication by Muhammad that the, the previous revelations were tampered with, simply because if they were from Allah, they couldn't be tampered by anybody. You're talking about the Hebrew, or are you talking about the Hebrew? Yes, the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament. You are saying... Okay. That it was those, tampered those are, with. Those are, no, I'm not saying that Hebrew was tampered with. So sure. I'm not saying that the Hebrew was tampered with. I'm saying that the, the King James Version that we have today, for the most part, and some of these other versions that we have today, those okay. scriptures have been touched. They've been affected. I'm not so saying you're... that the Hebrew language that was originally given to Christ has been diluted in any kind of way at all. But what many Muslims say that the Bible that we have today, the Hebrew Bible that we have today, has been tampered with. But you are many saying Muslims no. Many Muslims, but many Muslims don't understand even don't even understand the Quran. I'm from that point, from that, I agree with you 100 percent from that point of view. But this is the prevalent point of view in the Middle East, as I speak to you. I I was born in Baghdad in in Iraq. My okay. parents were agnostics. So they had no religion. So when I grew okay. up, I, ha I, had, I was able to read some books, but really in the Middle East, we were not permitted to read too many things. Quran okay. was available, but the Gospels and the Hebrew Bible were not. Only when I came to Europe, I was able to investigate these things. Mm -hmm. and, and my question is always simple. If, if Allah is the same as the God of the Bible, is the same as the God of Abraham, Moses, and Jesus. There should be no contradiction between the Quran and any of the other revelations. There shouldn't be. Well, it, it, it isn't. There is no contradiction. This is one stream of revelation from Genesis to Unmasked. This is just one stream of revelation. Man has gotten in it and put his footprint on it, corrupted it in, in certain places, if you go back to these original languages that it was given to us in, that was given to mankind in, you won't find any corruption there. You find continuity there. So it's, it's, you know, it's moving away from the original language into these other languages that have ultimately caused the problem of a man down through time. So according there's, no disagreement. there's no disagreement between Abraham and Moses and Christ Jesus and Muhammad. There's no disagreement between them at all. That's, this is one body of revelation, again, from Genesis to Unmasked. From what you are saying, I agree with you if we are discussing scripture. But interpretation of scripture is what causes the problem. That's are the you, problem. Uh -huh. So we agree that it's the interpretation of scripture. For example, I hear many imams, especially in the Middle East, they speak about the Jews as descended from apes and pigs. Never in the whole of the Quran did I find this in existence. Nowhere. All it says in the Quran, Jews who broke the rule of the Shabbat were turned into pigs and apes. Which is a completely different meaning from call, calling correct. all the Jews 
being descended of pigs and apes. Do you agree with me? That's, that's correct. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Thank you very much. I bless God, you. God, God bless you. God is not, God, look, God is not a, this is one human family. It is one sort, it's one human family. And the same thing that we find in just our individual families is really what we're supposed to find in the human family. There should be harmony. There should be unity. There should be uh, continuity. There should be love. There should be compassion amongst us as mortals throughout the globe. But we know man has, you know, he's been as affected by the world that he lives in. And so this is where the problem comes in. It's not from the revelation that God has given to man. It's man's understanding of the revelation. So we come up, you know, all of us, many of us, so most of us as Muslims, we say, well, well, I believe in the Quran and I accept the Quran and I understand the Quran, but then why do we have these differences then? If that's the case, it's the case because as Allah says to us in the Quran, many amongst mankind, we don't understand the Quran. So it's the interpretation that we have that causes the divisions and the separation. It's not the clear understanding of the book as it has been revealed to the prophets before Muhammad. And we are to accept those, we are to accept those prophets that came, the revelations that came before. The second chapter of the Quran tells us up front that we are to accept the, the revelation that came before the Quran. So, it is, uh, yeah, so this, yeah, yeah, this is Imam, man's interpretation that, that gets away, yes. Imam, it's honestly, it's a pleasure talking to you. I'll tell you why. I have discussed this subject off uh, radio, I mean, person to person with many Imams. But they are completely and utterly at a loss on how to answer the question. They always go back to their own interpretation, which is totally wrong. This is why we have yes. strife. This is why we have these wars of so-called religious wars. It's nothing to do with the religion itself. This is it. Well, our problem is, you know, we don't, the Quran answers itself. It does this task here on itself. You're right. We don't have to bring our interpretation into it because it clarifies itself. It, was, it, it, it tells us it's, it is expanding, correcting, and clarifying uh, the previous the, revelations. The, yeah. Yeah. Okay. The, the, the final question I'm asking this one. El Nisa, chapter 4, verse 157. And I'm reciting from the English Quran. That they said, We killed Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, the apostle of Allah. But they killed him not, nor crucified him. But so it was made to appear, appear to them, and those who differ therein are full of doubts with knowledge, but only conjecture to follow, for a surety they killed him not. Now, this is a remarkable statement, because in all four Gospels, no matter what variations they have in between them, all four of them agree on one single item. Jesus was crucified, he died on the cross, and was resurrected the third day. But this contradicts what the Quran is saying, that it was not Jesus who died, and he did not die on the cross. How can you explain that one, please? Well, because Christ is the consciousness. Jesus is the, Jesus, Jesus is the body. Jesus is the physical body, but Christ is the consciousness. You couldn't kill the consciousness. So it appeared, as they say, it appeared that uh, this crucifixion take, took place. It never took place. That body of knowledge, which Christ, that Christ consciousness represents, that was in Jesus, the son of Mary, it's still alive here today. They never crucified it. It could not be crucified. Just like Muhammad, the president of peace be upon him, that message that was brought cannot be crucified. The message that was brought by Abraham and Moses cannot be crucified. These are states of consciousness. These are bodies of consciousness. These are bodies of knowledge. So it's not the, the body. We, we, we get a bad understanding as we read it because we're thinking that it's talking about a man when it's not talking about a man. It's really talking about a consciousness that's in man that cannot die. <laughs> it's amazing because one and a half billion people followers of Muhammad 
do not know it as well as you do. One and a half billion a, people. That's I tragic. A teacher. <laughs> my teacher, my teacher, uh, Imam Walisuddin Muhammad, Allah's mercy be on him, was very, very uh, studious. He was a, a student of the Bible, also a student of the Quran, student of e Egyptology, ancient, ancient philosophy, um, you name it. He studied all these things. His teacher um, was, was really from Pakistan. He had a teacher from Pakistan. His father now, and I don't know if you know anything about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Allah's mercy be on him, uh, he had techniques of the religion. He didn't have al-Islam proper. He had a teacher that came to him with a particular philosophy that was designed to liberate uh, particularly African Americans in America. And he gave that philosophy to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught that philosophy, and it was a liberating message because people believed in it, even though it wasn't al-Islam proper. It was just techniques of al-Islam. When the Honorable Elijah Muhammad passed in 1975, his son opens up the Quran. And the, we, we always had the Quran, but for the most part, his father taught from the Bible. And when he came in the office in 1975, he opened up the Quran and started teaching us the Quran. This is when everything changed in our community. We went from a paramilitary-type organization into al-Islam proper. We moved all the chairs out of, the, out of our temples, and now we're sitting on the floors. They were called temples. Now they're called mosques. The, the book, we, our primary day now is on Friday, um, but that's where we came from. Our fasting, we would have been fasting this month, this, just, just December, and only in December. We weren't fasting with the whole Muslim world. So this is a unique development that is actually taking, has taken place here in America, and uh, the teacher that we had that has brought us into Al-Islam proper was very astute. He was very bright. God favored him. Allah favored him for whatever the reasons were. And he really changed the whole community, hundreds of thousands, in fact, millions of us, where today um, we're following Al-Islam proper, the Quran and the traditions of the prophet, the prayers, and the peace be upon him. This is where we are. So our understanding of the book uh, comes as a result of looking from his eyes, and his eyes basically were the same eyes that Muhammad the Prophet had, the prayers and the peace be upon him. He was a follower of Muhammad the Prophet, and, and so are we at this particular time. So some of us understand it, brothers, some of us don't. Some of us have a better understanding than others do. Uh, so, but most among mankind, as the scripture tells us, understands it not, because we don't understand it. The final question, you come from the origin of the black people in America, they come from Africa. How did they That's get correct. to the United States? How did they get to the United States of America? Well, we were brought here against our will. Um, but, you know, Africans today who are basically our forebears and our brothers and our sisters, they don't see that um, ordeal, even though we went through chattel slavery uh, to get to where we are. They don't see that as a curse, that that was a curse on us, because they look at where we are, people on the African continent today, they look at where we are and they see how the skills, the talent um, that we've been blessed with, the know-how, uh, that we've been blessed with, the education that we've been blessed with, the success that we've been blessed with in this part of the world uh, now can be used on the African continent. And so what we are starting to see is movement by Muslims on this continent, which is the last continent really for the expression of al-Islam amongst African Americans, moving back to the African continent, helping them develop because they're underdeveloped. So brought against our will, 
um, subjected to chattel slavery, uh, but because of where we are today, uh, we don't necessarily see it as a curse, even though we know it was a lot of pain and suffering that our forebears went through as a result of being in this part of the world, but it could only have happened based on what a law permitted to happen. So we're not here uh, by accident in any kind of way. Islam is growing on this continent. It's going to continue to grow on this continent. We, we don't, we, we're not surprised uh, or won't be surprised at some particular point that we have a Muslim as a, as a president in this country. You and I probably won't see it at our age, but as we move four, five generations on into the future, uh, it's a very, very great possibility because we can see what, what has happened here in this part of the world. Religion has really uh, been strained. Um, many people who are of religion, whether they're Christians, Jews, or Muslims, have become disenchanted, really, with religion. Religion has a black eye, for the most part, uh, in the eyes of the public, in the global public. So, but people know in this particular part of the world that Al-Islam is a true religion. Al-Islam is here for the salvation of mankind. Uh, most of your scholars in this part of the world know that Muhammad, the prophet, the prayers and the peace be upon him, was a mercy to mankind. He wasn't just sent to Arabs. He was sent to all of mankind. And uh, people are accepting it, and they're looking at it. And even though we see these problems that's going on around the world, we feel pretty good about where the world is right now. <laughs> We're trying to, the, the advancement is still going on. Uh, in the world, we try to hold on to the progress that we've made uh, in the world. Good people, righteous people, the, the people that are, that are in the army of the righteous, we try to hold on to this growth and development. But, you know, uh, the shaitan is never sleeping, uh, doing what he has to do, but he's no match for Allah. He's no match for the creator of heavens and earth. And what these things that we're watching take place, uh, throughout the globe today, at some point they come to an end and things start continue on to where God wants them to go. So, Imam, Imam uh, with all your yes. respect, you, you miss something when you talk about Africa. I mean, I studied the history of Africa and slavery. The people who sold the African people to the white man were Arabs or Muslim blacks. This is history, yeah. not, it's not a propaganda. No, that's West, correct. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Uh, my, I, my, yeah, my, studies, with my studies indicate 140 million Africans were slaughtered. So that yeah. 14 million were, who survived were sold to the Americas. 5% yeah. of all of this only ended up in the United States of America. The remainder into the Caribbean and South America. That's correct. So it was Islam, but it was Islam which brought you to America. It, it, this is what the contradiction is. This is what I find difficult to uh, absorb. It's the Muslim religion which looks upon the black person as Abid. Abid means slave. Even today, yeah. if you go to North Africa or if you go anywhere in the Arab world, a black man is not called Aswad. Aswad is the color. He's right. called Abid. Even today, 21st century Arabia, a black man is called a slave. That's a fact. It's not a propaganda. I, I, no, I agree with you wholeheartedly. You know, the prophet's last message, <laughs> the, the, his final address, he was trying to clarify that and trying to straighten that out because even during his time, you know, still caste systems wanted to find them, their expression and people who were black, like Bilal, even though he was a, a, a secretary, a helper to the prophet, the prayers and the peace be upon him, a caller of the prayer, people still had a problem with him because of the color of his skin. Absolutely. But it doesn't, look, it does, it, look, in all of these religions, there's corruption in all of them, in all, in all of them. You got bad people in all of them. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Human nature, uh, 
unfortunately, at this particular juncture in the history of the evolution of man, you know, has fallen away from that natural, pure state that uh, first father, Adam, had. We're in a whole other different place now when you consider uh, man on the globe today. So in the 1500s, I mean, you know, when, when slaves or captives were being brought into this part of the country, we know that history. We know that there were Muslims. We know that there were Christians and others on the African continent that sold us into slavery. So while we look at it and we think from the standpoint of the ordeal itself in terms of how many people were lost in the Middle Passage uh, as opposed to where we are today, we don't just see it as a curse on us. You know, Allah does what he wills. Bad experience, but, you know, once, once we consider where we are and where we're going at this particular point, in the long run, you know, I think we're much better off. The world is going to be much better off as a result of black people off the African continent being in America today. From that, yeah, from that point of view, you're 100% correct. From that yeah. point of view, the black people in the, in the United States of America especially, I can't speak about Latin yeah. America, they have done extremely yeah. well because of the state of the, 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 the union, the it's a republic, it's not a democracy. The United States of America is not a democracy. It's a republican state. It's, a, it's not a constitutional republic. The point is this. Every single terrorist group, when they act in slaughtering other human beings, called kuffar, because they're non-Muslim, they shout, Allahu Akbar. ISIS yeah. quotes ISIS yeah. and Hamas they quote directly verbatim from the Quranic verses to justify what they're doing. And you are saying they are doing it wrong. Uh, you know, it doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't, but this is where we are in the... Yeah, I know, but I'm tra- somebody has got to point out, somebody like you has got to point out that what ISIS is doing, what uh, Hamas is doing, is contrary to Islam. Because now what's happening in the world, it doesn't matter there are demonstrations in support of uh, Hamas. The fact what Hamas did on video, recorded by themselves, not recorded by Christians and Jews, recorded by the terrorists themselves, proves there is something wrong, catastrophically wrong. To, to speak, Allah ordered me to do this, I find that a repulsive. The world does. <laughs> the world, the world does. The world would never accept it. C- can never accept that type of behavior from any people, any group, any individual. Our human nature won't allow that to to be accepted. It doesn't matter who it comes, who 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 is coming from. Whether police, p- people say that they believe in God or they say they don't believe in God, it will never be accepted. The human nature will never accept it can't be accepted by the human nature. Doesn't but, matter how much scripture you doesn't matter, doesn't matter how much scripture you read. <laughs> I agree with you. But millions of people in the Muslim world, millions of people in the Arab world support Hamas and what they did. Millions. We're not talking about ten thousand people, we're talking about hundreds of millions of people. So there is something wrong. Somebody's got to explain. Something is Well we know no, no, we know what's wrong. We know what's wrong. The world has got away from totally, totally and correctly believing in the creator of the heavens and earth. All of us need to start believing and trusting in the creator of the heavens and earth. That's the only way you're going to satisfy this problem. God has to guide us out of it. <laughs> There's no other way to get out of it. So we all have to read our books, accept the, the clear guidance in the book, not our own thoughts about what the book means, that's the big problem. It's just in, in the interpretation. It's not the book. It's not the religion. Religion is not the problem for any of us. It's not Judaism. It's not Christianity. It's not Al-Islam. That's not, don't, don't, those, this, these entities are not the problem. It's man. Man is the problem. And <laughs> his interpretation of what has been revealed. 
from the point of view of the failure of humans, there is absolutely no doubt. From the beginning of creation, Adam, they got two children, one killed the other one. From the beginning of creation, it shows how evil a human being can be. From the, I mean, this is remarkable. Two children, two brothers, one of them goes and kills the other one. So from the beginning of humanity, there is a huge failure. But here we have people who are quoting verbatim from the Quran to justify what they're doing, and every imam in the Middle East supports it. I mean, literally, when I say every imam, that's wrong. Almost 98% of all the imams in the Middle East support it. So there is something... I, I can't put my finger on it and explain it to you in English. There is there's something... No that need has... there's, no, there's no need you trying to. <laughs> there's no need you trying to. It is what it is. We have to harvest the good and forgive the rest <clears throat> and go on down the road. Time is going to pass. God's clock. We're not just on man's clock. We're on God's clock. The world don't belong to us. The world belongs to the Creator. And it's going to always belong yeah. to him. And at the end of the day, the only thing that's going to be left is his attributes. That's it. So you're not going to be able to try to rationalize this and, and reason with this and come into some type of clear understanding of all of this. It's not so going to happen. It's not going to happen. So how do you solve the problems of the wars of religion? Oh. No, until man is willing to accept what God has revealed wholeheartedly and take himself out the picture, you don't solve it. It won't get solved. It can only be solved by truth. It can only be solved by justice. It can only be fair, solved by fairness. It can only be solved by honesty. It can only, it can only be solved that way. You're not going to come to peace any other way. Well... From that point of view, we're never going to solve it. Never. Because we have failures in interpretations, failures in belief, failures in honesty, failures, failures in everything, literally. Look what's happening now in the new generation. They don't believe in God. They don't believe in justice. They don't believe in fairness. They don't believe in anything. It's dystopian. Some of them do. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, well, do. I agree yeah. when you speak, some of them, you see, when you have 10% believe and 90% don't, uh, I look at the 90%, I don't look at the 10%. Well, but here's the thing, when we, when, when we lose our faith, it's over with anyway. <laughs> you have to keep your faith. You're not, you and I are not going to see it. We're not going to see it. What we think the objective of man is, which is peace, and tranquility throughout the globe. You and I, we're not going to see that. We're not going to see it. That's a not tragedy. In our, not in <laughs> our lifetime. Yeah, but that's a tragedy. Not... Why, why shouldn't we see it in our lifetime? I want to know. Why? When will we see it? If, we, if not in your lifetime and my lifetime, when will anybody see it? Well, we don't know. Exactly. Exactly. We are back to square one. I don't want to... <laughs> to take more time of you. I would love you to discuss your book. It has, been a, it, is, it has been a pleasure talking to you, I tell you that. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's, a nice, it's been a pleasure uh, talking to you. Well, I would like us to discuss your book now, please. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Yeah. Well, t tell us, tell us, doctor, a little bit about your book, and I know that IQ and Don will, will have some questions for you, my friend. So talk to us a little bit about the book, doctor. Yeah, help yourself to ultimate health. You know, I, I've been a columnist for the Muslim Journal, which is a national and international um, publication for well over 30 years. I'm a naturopathic doctor by profession, and um, I was fortunate enough to be um, educated by a person that took a liking to me uh, in the 80s propositioned me, um, said to me, he said, look like you're healthy. Would you like to learn something about health and nutrition? He was an iridologist, a person that really studied the iris of the eye. 
and could determine what was actually going on in the system of the person. He was a nutritional consultant, and um, and he was a master herbalist. And I started to acquaint him with people in my world in the northeastern part of the United States in the Midwest, and as he would treat people, I would follow behind him. That's how basically I got started with this. And then around 1988, 1999, I started writing for uh, the Muslim Journal, this publication, and I'm still writing for it today. I still have a column uh, in the paper today. Uh, and from those publications, along with other um, speeches that I've done down through time, I end up putting together Help Yourself to Ultimate Health. It is designed, really, to empower a person um, to take control of their own life and start to build better health. And my theory is uh, building better health is better than fighting disease. Uh, mostly what you see here in the Western world today, uh, particularly when it gets down to the extremes, such as cancer and some of the other autoimmune disorders that's taking its toll on the public, uh, we're fighting it, we're fighting the disease as opposed to building better health. That's what you're doing with chemotherapy and radiation and operations. So we're talking in help yourself to ultimate health, we're really talking about uh, natural things, natural substances, fresh air and sunshine and exercise and rest and relaxation and nutrition, hygiene, uh, sanitation, those things which are designed to build better health in the person. So the book is really designed to empower a person uh, to take control of their own life and it shares um, those principles that are necessary to do it. So these are age-old principles. There's, there's not new principles that we're talking about here. They're age-old. They've been here for a very, very long time. Uh, man has been using them in every quarter of the globe. And I was fortunate to come in contact with someone that had been exposed to these things and now down through time. Um, the creator over heavens and earth has blessed me um, to come in contact with people that have been very, very, very helpful and being able to kind of shape me so that I could share what it was that, um, that they had. And as a result of that, we've gotten a chance to help people here in America, the Caribbean, some people in Africa, and Canada. Fantastic. So Don Mazzella, go, go, go ahead, my friend. Well, first off, um, uh, I, I found that conversation with you and IQ extremely uh, interesting. You know, it's, uh, people say well, if you talk to each other, a lot of things get resolved or at least um, um, brought to the fore. I thought the, that the discussion between the two of you was, uh, to me, very, very interesting. Um, uh, thank you both for that. Uh, I think that's important. But um, can I just ask a question on that before we go to your book? Sure. Um, IQ always talks about Islam saying that, um, in effect, uh, that uh, Islam, Islam has to overcome uh, every other religion. How do you feel about it, and how do you uh, reconcile yourself to what I... IQ believes. Well, I don't believe that El Islam is supposed to be the dominant religion uh, in the world. Uh, in fact, I think the term that's actually used there really means evident more so than dominant. It's very, very evident today that El Islam is a major pillar in the lives of people throughout the globe. But in terms of it being the dominant religion, I don't believe that. Okay. Uh, well, then let's go to your, your book. Uh, by the way, what's the title of your book? Help Yourself to Ultimate Health. And uh, uh, I heard what you say, but 
For, can you give us um, one example of what you mean by that? I mean, what specific one specific thing that you ha have your readers do? Well, one of the t first thing is first thing is um, let, let's consider when we start talking about health. You, you got you, you you you're talking about hygiene, you're talking about sanitation, and you're talking about nutrition. Those are the three main things that you're talking about. So the book really focused the attention on making sure that digestion and elimination, which probably are the two most important metabolic processes that needed to take place in the body of the person in order for the person to have good health. So we're made up of organs and systems and cells and so on and so forth, and they all need attention. They all need t attention. They're working all the time. The body metabolism is going on all the time uh, in the body, and the, the body has to be cleansed. If, it does, if it's not cleaning itself, then it has to be um, put into a, a, uh, a intentional form of cleansing, otherwise it's going to take you into a voluntary state of cleansing. So let me give you an example. You know, the, we're on the pattern that the rest of the cosmic order is on. The, the seasons are coming and going. The spring, the summer, the fall, the winter uh, affects us just like it affects the rest of the cosmic order. It's like it's affecting the animals, it's affecting the plants. Everything is being affected as a, as a result of the season changing. So I say in the book uh, that we should be doing seasonal cleansing. The springtime is the time for you to literally clean up the liver and the body. Now, most people, we don't think that way in this part of the world. People do think this way in other parts of the world, whether it's the Far East, in some cases the Middle East, some cases in Africa, they think that way. In fact, we can go to the Chinese. In fact, this, this really has to do a lot with Chinese medicine, uh, which has been uh, canonized or they've been recording medical treatments for well over 5,000 years. And so they basically say the, the, the cleaning up the uh, liver is helpful to us uh, in the springtime. Everything is waiting on the spring. The, the, the earth has been dead, um, hypothetically speaking, uh, from the winter. And everything, the, the animals have been hibernating. And some have went south and coming back north now. Uh, but it's time for man to clean up certain organs in the body, and we say it's the liver. It's the organ of life. It's suffering. Well, how do, you really clean, how do you clean up your liver? Well, you can detox it with uh, uh, olive oil and grapefruit juice or either lemon juice or either lime juice. Uh, olive oil is a, a powerful uh, oil that causes the liver and the gallbladder to become convulsive and start pushing a lot of waste material out of it. So I suggest for my clients, whether they're doing it uh, in the springtime or if I'm, it doesn't matter what time of year I'm catching them, um, I say to you, one of the things that I want you doing is at least uh, cleaning up your, your liver and your gallbladder at least twice a month for the first six months. So that's the first thing. Next thing is the summer's coming in. The circulatory system needs attention. The heart needs attention. The heart, the, the, the heat becomes a burden on the circulatory system, becomes a burden on the heart. And so we suggest herbal botanicals that have been used since man has been on this globe for a very long time uh, to uh, hawthorn berry or cactus have been used for a very long time. Um, um, there are other herbal botanicals that man can use in order to clean up the circulatory system in the heart. Uh, and then you're going into the fall. When you get into the fall, uh, that's the time when really mucus and catarrh starts to flow. So we suggest that you clean up the respiratory tract, the bronchioles and the sinuses, 
uh, because as a result of the consumption of foods, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats uh, throughout the year, in most cases, all of it's not gone out of the body. It's not eliminated out of the body. Much of it get tra gets trapped in the body. And so this is an eliminative tract. The respiratory tract is an eliminatory tract. And if you don't subject yourself to a voluntary cleanse, then when the weather changes uh, in the fall, then the body will subject, subject you to an involuntary cleanse. And this is what they're saying right now that this is the flu season, the cold and flu season. Well, why don't everybody get it if that's the, cold, if that's the case? It is the, the weather becomes a trigger to release the catarrh and the mucus, but those people who have been subjecting themselves uh, to the discipline of cleansing in the respiratory tract prior to the change of the uh, weather, then they don't suffer those same things that uh, people will suffer that haven't done any cleansing at all. And then you go into the winter. When you get into the winter, it's time for you to clean up the kidneys, the pipe system in the body. And there are herbal botanicals that have been used for the longest to clean up uh, the, um, the kidneys. So if we follow this, this is annual seasonal cleansing. If you take and clean up these organs and these systems annually, then you really start to preserve your life. You really, and you reverse, slow down. You can't reverse it, but you slow down the aging process. You help build the immune response. You keep the immune response healthy in the body. So many things just come just as a result of just that, this one thing that I'm talking to you about in terms of annual seasonal cleansing. Hmm. Uh, 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 one question. Um, did you say you use olive oil to cleanse your liver? Yeah, I... olive oil, a, vir a virgin light olive oil, and uh, pink grapefruit juice. Now, well, what do you do? Well, you need four ounces of the four ounces of the grapefruit juice, four ounces of the olive oil. Uh, you're going to drink it down and then go lay down for an hour, and the flush is complete after an hour. I'm, I'm I lucky mean, if I last it's enough. It's that simple. It's that simple, and it's that, and it's very inexpensive uh, for a person to do. Do you know today that almost two billion of the eight billion people that's on this globe are suffering from a non-alcoholic fatty liver? It's one of the fastest growing problems that we have throughout the throughout the globe today. Well, Non-alcoholic, what? I'm sorry. Non-alcoholic fatty liver. Oh. The fatty liver. Yes. It's the accumulation of fat in yes. the liver that's coming primarily from carbohydrates now that have been converted to fat because insulin levels are too high in the blood. Hmm. And so goes through the portal vein up into the liver congest the liver, and then that's what's causing so much of the problem uh, today. And many of these liver transplants and kidney transplants and all of these things can be avoided just by um, engaging and subjecting yourself to annual cleansing. So, so many things can be satisfied just as a result of us taking these kind of steps that I just shared with you. The spring, the summer, the fall, and the winter. If you just did that, it's not, look, it's not, I, I don't care how many people are listening to us today or will listen to us in the future. Everybody needs what I just told you. Everybody. Doesn't matter where they are on the globe. Doesn't matter whether they're young or whether they're old. I mean, baby doesn't need it. But as, a, you know, young adults, uh, teenagers, young adults, and people as they advancing in age, we all need cleansing. We all need detoxing. It's just like your car. You don't change the oil and it's going to break down at some particular point. So these systems and these organs and these cells, they're working all the time. And we, they need relief. But more importantly, they need cleansing and detoxing. And the more you clean it up, the better it's going to run. The better the fuel you put in here in your body, 
the better it's going to perform, just like with your automobile. So it's understand. All this is in help yourself to ultimate health. Understanding food groups, carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, and fibers, the importance of them, and the, the, the proper utilization of them. Too much sugar isn't good for us, even though we want it, but it's one of the biggest problems that we have, sugar. Not the cane itself, but the derivative that comes from it. Pr- pretty much the white sugar that we're consuming for the most part is pretty much in everything. And then the wheat that we consume. We consume too much wheat. All of that wheat converts itself into sugar. And when glucose levels become too high um, because we ate too much of these products and we've caused the pancreas to become trigger happy, it becomes insulin resistant. When it becomes insulin resistant, that's when the problem starts. It's not the sugar that really causes cancer for people. It's not the sugar, it's it's the high sugar content in the blood that causes the problem. Um, Jimmy? I'll tell you, this is amazing. We have got a great guest with us today. Uh, So IQ, uh, do you have any questions for the doctor about his book? Yes, doctor. So from what you are saying, you're trying to do preemption. You are trying to preempt what's happening. That's correct. You got to be on the preventive side of healthcare. I'm on the preventive side of healthcare. Your yep. allopathic doctors, those that sedate, medicate, and operate, they're on the curative side of it. Well, I mean, it's necessary and needed, and allopathic medicine has done. A tremendous job. We got fine doctors in the world today. I mean, I mean, I'm not the person to come to see if your eyeball is hanging out, or, or you know, if you, if your leg is broken or something. Like that. I'm not. To, that's not the per. I, I'm not the guy to see. <laughs> Mine is to, to try to prevent that from happening, you know. Uh, but um, you got to get on the right side of it if you want to preserve your health. And the right side of it. Uh, is the preventive side instead of the curative side of it. So, I mean, but it's, you know, it's big business. You know, big pharma is here uh, dispensing medication and drugs every day. And many people today uh, in America, Europe, and other places throughout the world have become very, very disenchanted uh, with the consumption of these medications uh, would like to get free of them, uh, but just don't know how. And so this is kind of what Help Yourself to Ultimate Health helps the person do. It really educates the person, empowers the person, lets them know that there are alternatives to conventional and traditional medicine today and that they can take advantage of, which is less expensive um, and in many cases, well, integrative, integrative medicine is really what we're talking about because I'm not against operations. I'm not against chemotherapy. I'm not against radiation. It's necessary and needed uh, at certain times, but there are other methods that, that can be used too. There are other substances out here that will fight cancer uh, to help you overcome cancer. I mean, vitamin C can help you over cancer. Mistletoe can help you over, uh, overcome these things. Um, ozone therapy can help you overcome these things, you know, uh, but people are just not aware of them. Not, they're not conscious of them. Dr. Norudin, it's been a pleasure talking to you for yes. an hour. Yes, Unbelievable. This, has been, this has been just amazing. Uh, before we let everybody go, let's start with uh, Don Mazella. Don, I uh, um, um, uh, uh, 2SBDigest.com, uh, hashtag 2SBDigest, um, the National R- Robotics Education Foundation, the, the hyphen NREF.org, and my new book, Ruler of the Seas. It's out and ho- doing fairly well. That's awesome. That's Congratulations. Awesome. 
Done. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations to you. So IQL Rizzoli. Uh, no, I give I give I give the floor to the doctor. <laughs> okay, well, well, you doctor. You did a hell of a job today, IQ. You didn't even talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> IQ IQ has got a wonderful spirit. I tell you. Thank you. you know, Thank you. I, yeah, I I talk to a lot of people, um, and I'm I'm pretty sensitive. You know, to people, and he's got a very, very good spirit. Uh, it was good talking to him today and having this discussion with him um, to see what his thinking is and where his spirit really is. And um, and I, I'm impressed. I'm really impressed with it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, we were we were really impressed with the conversation, um, Doctor. Uh, how do we get your book and and get in touch with you online, Doctor? You can go to uh, D-R-N-U-R-I-D-D-I-N books, B-O-O-K-S dot com, Dr. Nuruddin books dot com. That's awesome. You can go there. That's yeah. awesome. And from there, you can, you can pretty much find me. I'm on pretty much all of the platforms um, from Facebook to Instagram to X and all of those places you can find me. <laughs> and if you want to reach me in my office, uh, that, that telephone number is there. Fantastic. Uh, but I'll give it to you here. It's uh, 336-852-3040. Fantastic. That's 336-852-3040. Well, this has been an amazing conversation. Doctor, I hope you come back and uh, and, and do, do it again. It was... Uh, it was fun, and uh, Don, it was an honor to, to have you on today as well, and uh, IQ, just thank you, my man. That, 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 this was a heck of a spirited back and forth today. James, I need well, a recording, yeah, yeah. copy of the recording. Yes, yes, I'm going to send that to you as soon as we get off the air here. Take um, care. Yeah, James, you, uh, you, can, uh, you, know, you can reach out to me anytime, my friend. I will do you know? it. I will do it. We've, well, got a, uh, we've got a bridge that's been built here, yeah. <laughs> well, that'll work. Well, gentlemen, have yourself a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week, my friends. There they go. It is IQ Al Rizzoli. Ooh. It is Don Mazzella, and it is Dr. Derudin. And uh, that is that. Uh, just amazing, amazing stuff. And uh, we will talk to you soon. This has been the world famous. Jiggy Jaguar Radio Broadcast.